In this video, I'm gonna show my website traffic analysis process that you can use for your existing website or to even check the website traffic of your competitors. So I'm gonna use a variety of tools to check both, again, your existing traffic or your competitor's traffic. Now, the nice thing about this is gonna help you evaluate if you're getting more traffic and if your marketing is working for your website. And it's also gonna allow you to benchmark yourself against competitors and compare how much traffic you have versus your competitors, which you can use to inform your strategy as well. So we'll start with the method for your own website. The best thing to do is to actually use your website analytics like Google Analytics 4. Um, when we look at competitors, because you're, obviously you're not gonna have access to their Google Analytics, you're gonna need to use third-party tools like SE Ranking, Ahrefs, or SEM Rush. And those tools can estimate how much organic traffic or website traffic a website is getting. Um, but when you have access to your own um, analytics, that's going to be the place we want to start to evaluate our traffic. So inside of GA4, I'm going to go to reports. And there's a variety of reports. Your interface might look different because you can actually customize this reporting menu. I tend to like to go to acquisition and then traffic acquisition. This tends to be where I like to go to evaluate traffic because I can see the overall number of sessions or users I have on my website. And I can also see the breakdown of what channels are driving those users. So I like to have this data handy when I can basically look at trends if my traffic is going up or down, then I could see why. Is it one of these channels? So if we do a comparison, if we go to the date range field, we could toggle on compare, and that's gonna allow me to compare to the previous period, or I could do previous year, let's do previous period. Now this is gonna give me some comparison data. So my traffic is down 22% over the last 30 days versus the prior period. And if I dig into why, I could start to see so my organic search is down a little bit at 14. Same thing with direct. Here's a larger drop, this unassigned traffic. So I might wanna investigate what this unassigned is. That seems to be the largest drop. My email traffic's up. My video traffic's about even. Yeah, so really when you dig into this, this here is the big difference maker. Um, yes, these two add up as well, organic, particularly organic with the volume. So these two things I can now dig into and I've narrowed it down where I could actually evaluate um, why this traffic drop happened and then ultimately figure out what can I do about it. So really, I need to look at my organic search and I need to dig into what this unassigned traffic is. Um, so again, this is my favorite report in Google Analytics to get this data because I like to have the comparison by channel. Um, you could also look by page. So I have this landing page report here. There's also uh, this pages and screens reports under engagement that you could look at. Again, your interface might look a little bit different but the main takeaway here is I can do the same analysis by page. So now I can start to see like, is there a page on my website that's causing this drop? So it looks like this page is down a little bit kind of in line with the average. This one's down a little bit of a higher percentage. Um, we can go down the list. looks like this one's down about 35%. You also want to look at the volume here because it's about 11 sessions. So again, this is a great way to just figure out why traffic might be up or down. Now this will get you pretty far just by using Google Analytics here to figure out um, how much traffic you're getting and is it going up or down over time. Um, I tend to like to zoom out and look at longer time periods. Like typically like, I like a 13 month time range because then I could see year over year in the same chart. So a lot of times um, when I'm making a, a report, I'll usually look at that time frame. Now, if you wanna look at competitors, you can't use your own analytics. You would need access to their analytics account. So what we have to do is start to use uh, third party tools. So I'm going to show how to do this in three different tools, uh, SE Ranking, Ahrefs, and SEM Rush. So under the research section, you'll see competitor research. This is where I can enter in any website. So let's do, let's do, let's do this website here, contrarian thinking. Um, so let's put this in. So here I can see how much traffic this website is getting. And I can actually see that there's been a decline. I can see their domain authority or domain trust score. Uh, if they were running paid ads and had page search traffic, I could actually see that as well. And I even get trends here. So this is uh, one of my favorite features is actually looking at longer term trends and you can click on any of these pre-built date ranges. So I can see like long term there is growth. It looks like they had growth really all the way into March, 2024. Then there was a big drop. They sort of trended back up and now they're dropping again. So a lot of volatility over the last year. Prior to that, they were really on like a growth trajectory. Um, so this is kind of a, just a nice way to see if traffic's trending up or down for any website. So you'll know if your competitors are growing or staying the same. 
and then you can investigate where they're investing their, their marketing dollars. Now, I really like to look at this report too, like where is the traffic coming from? I can get a breakdown by country. Um, keywords are, are really important here, so I can see for their organic traffic, what's the source, uh, which keywords are driving it. There's some more data in here, but for like traffic purposes, those are typically the things I look at, um, or this chart here. You could also look at traffic cost, which is a way to gauge like how valuable the traffic is or how much it costs on Google Ads. Uh, the nice thing about this, you could always get the definition here. So this would be um, sort of like a way to gauge value. If you're ranking for like high CPC, high cost per click keywords, the reason those cost per clicks are high is typically because someone, someone, an advertiser is getting conversions or they're getting an ROI from it, so they're willing to spend more. It doesn't always mean that, it, but it generally means if the cost per click is higher, people, advertisers are willing to spend more money or other businesses are willing to spend more money on that keyword. So if you could rank organically, you're get, capturing a lot of value. So this chart sort of gauges that. You can see there was a big increase that kind of maintained and now that's really dropped off. Now, if we wanna put another website in, let's look at my website. So my website, I've kind of neglected a bit. So let's see what some of the numbers look like here. So yeah, if we look at traffic cost on my website, we can see there was really strong growth uh, into the start of this year. Um, and then since then there's been a decline. And if we look at traffic, it's a similar trend. I had really strong growth going into this year and then I've really neglected the website um, and haven't done a whole lot with it since then and now I've actually been starting to decline. So we could see that clearly here. There was about a year where I really didn't do much with my website. You can see there was no traffic. Then I kind of focused on uh, doing some SEO work on it and grew it and then now it's sort of trended back down. So you can really see all that here. Now, if I go into Ahrefs, I can go to Site Explorer and do a similar thing. So once I put in the website URL, over here, I have a chart where I can control the metrics I wanna see. So I can see organic traffic. And then I can see, again, in the last year, I'm gonna change this out. Let's do last two years. Again, we can see I had some good growth. As soon as 2025 hit, I started to get a decline. Um, sometimes I like to overlay organic pages, which kind of shows traffic versus the amount of content I'm producing. So we can kind of see during this growth spike, I was producing a little more content. I went from 12 pages to about 28. Since then I've slowed down quite a bit and kind of stayed around the 28 to 32 range. Um, so it's kind of some interesting way you can sort of like compare two different metrics. I really like the monthly view. I don't really like this daily view. Um, it sometimes makes the charts hard to read. If you're gonna look at a short time horizon, it's okay, but I really like to zoom out and look at the trends monthly. So again, you can put any website in here. Uh, you can also see brand versus non-brand, which is a nice feature of like how much traffic is coming from branded keywords, how much is coming from non-brand. And there's some additional data at the bottom. Uh, if we go into SEM Rush here, we're gonna do a similar thing. We're gonna enter the, my website in in the domain overview. And now I'm gonna get my traffic chart right here. Again, I'm gonna get organic and paid traffic. And I could see um, some different trends here. So again, that same trend around January or February, my traffic started to decline and we could see that pretty clearly here. And if I zoom out further and go two years, I could also see when the growth happened. And around May, 2024, I kind of peaked over the summer of 2024 into October and then now I've started to decline. So I can get that traffic data right here. Um, if we do, let's do like a, a larger website that probably has paid spend. So if we put in HubSpot, again, you can put in any website here. Um, now they have paid data, so if I get rid of this, I can really see their paid traffic trends, which is a pretty cool feature. I think all three of these tools allow us to do that, to see uh, organic and paid. Let's compare that here, let's do HubSpot. And again, if I put them here, I could toggle this off, and now I have paid spend. In Ahrefs, again, we could do the same thing. And I can actually see the paid search traffic trends. So average paid traffic, and again, I can get that trend chart here. So those are kind of the ways I look at traffic for competitors. What you can do as well is export this all into a Google Sheet and really do a comparison of your, your brand versus your competitors. Um, I don't get too hung up on these numbers. To me, the number here doesn't matter that much. I'm more concerned with uh, comparing the trends and then also comparing sort of like an apples to apples comparison. If I would stick with one tool when you do this analysis, that way the traffic numbers, we're using the same source to try to make the comparison as fair as possible. If you're comparing multiple competitor websites and your brand versus those competitors, 
I like to be consistent with the tool I'm using just because these, again, these are estimates. They're not real traffic numbers. I don't care about the number as much. I more care about the difference between competitors and the trend. If the trend is going up or down or flat, that tells me, that gives me some information to inform my strategy. Um, and then comparing equal and sort of like as apples to apples as you can get is kind of what I like to do with these. So, so that's really it for website traffic analysis. Um, we have some reporting dashboards in Looker Studio that we give away. Uh, on my newsletter, I have one that I publish. It's a Looker Studio dashboard that can help you evaluate your own website traffic so you don't have to log into GA4. Everything's configured, the charts are already built. You just need to connect your data. So if you want that, you can leave a comment below and I'll also put the link to the newsletter. So on that newsletter, once you sign up, you just go to the archives and you'll have access to all the templates and tools that we've released. So. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments um, what other methods you use to evaluate website traffic.